Okay, hello, hello everyone, this is Kiru Show here, and whenever we last left off, I actually just brought the Ten Commandments in. Now, another thing I did is, in between this video and the last video, people, well, if you guys only view this what if, I just uploaded what if Deku had Riddick's powers. Now, that took quite a minute to upload, so I'm going to be recording this a little bit later, because I cannot record and have a video uploading at the same time, because my phone takes it as too much battery drain, so it'll stop me from either uploading or recording. Usually, it's recording. So, that took longer than I thought. Now, I have been waiting a minute to respond to comments because I know the person who asked me to do this what if accident prone actually does. I made their day and it was really happy and exciting for them to see that what if actually come to life. Because I promised them I would do it for 200. And as I hit 200, I finally did it. Living up to their expectations, hopefully. And I plan on recording part two after this one. Now then, whenever we last left off, the Ten Commandments were training with Deku and everyone else in 1A. Everyone would get noticeably stronger within the span of these two weeks, but Deku would have actually calmed it down and actually understand how to use his demon form better. Well, not demon form, because he's not actually a demon, but he does have the powers of a demon, so that is very helpful. Now, to clear up confusion, Deku is no demon. He has the Seven Hearts and the Ten Commandments. They are quirk users, not demon users with curses. They are nervously buffed and actually have weaknesses to their quirks. Like Esterosa, they just have to directly want to harm or kill him. So if you don't care about him, or if you basically get brainwashed, you can attack him. Because that's a flaw in his quirk. He, each one of these people have to have specific reasons for you to want to harm them. And we have Grey Road, who is the commandment of pacifism. He considers himself to be a pacifist, because the way his quirk works is if you want to harm him, and you do harm him, instead of aging up to your death, you just revert back to before you developed your quirk. So, you would go back to that stage for a very limited time. Let's say about 10 to 20 minutes. So, yeah, anyways. Now then. Esterosa is training Deku and Bakugo. Bakugo always ending up falling to the ground anytime he wants to go to attack. So he would actually have to learn to calm down and attack. This would actually help him become more strategic with his attacking and actual movements. And his personality would take a bit more of a shift. Because... He basically pissed himself during the sports festival after hearing Deku talk and monologue like an actual villain against him. But he just kept his composer while talking to Bakugo. And he was screaming this at the top of his lungs. Now doing this would have actually turned a lot of the villains who have listened to Stain's speech somewhat heroic. So they would be more vigilantes than villains looking to actually go hurt people. So Toga, she would have... Whatever that rival school is against UA, she would have actually signed up for that. And actually gotten in their class. Now then. After that. 
I just realized Tokuyami, the Dark Shadow guy, is essentially my Deku. Okay. Because I just realized he lost control of his quirk and had to overpower him, just like it does Meliodas. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. Well, that just kind of shattered everything about this. Now then. During the attack, because let's say that the, some of the commandments would have had to leave, but Esterosa would have acted more like a big brother and actually would have stayed and actually talked to a lot of the kids in UA. And people, they would actually somewhat respect him because he's taking time out of his busy schedule to actually stay with them on certain days. So, like, he would be able to stay with them every... Probably two Fridays and stay with them for dinner and actually give them some tips at the dinner table to improve themselves. And yeah. Now, the test of courage would actually be a test Deku is willing to take. And he would take this without any second question, second question or guessing himself. And let's say that they did this a day before the villain is in. So, they would have actually done it. And Deku would have actually frightened everyone in 1B and 1A by actually dismembering one of his arms and throwing it at people. Now, it sounds very stupid because whenever he would have done this, he would have used a trail of darkness to like pick it up and just drag it back into the forest. Now, whenever he would do this, he would be screaming the whole time like he was being attacked by something. So people would just nope, nope, out of there. People would ask how Deku could do that. This is whenever he would say that during the USJ, that thing that killed him, that stabbed him in the heart, it actually took off one of his arms, but he just patched it back on with darkness. And it immediately healed. Now then, USJ attack. Duh. USJ attack. The next day. USJ. Okay. Sorry about that. I just hit my head on the wall. Anyways. The forest training camp at uh, attack. I don't know if you guys heard that or not. But I actually just did that. I kept repeating the same USJ. Oh my god. I feel stupid. Anyways. After that, this is whenever Koda would have actually been around and stuck around to talk to a lot of the people there, talking to Esterosa, because he has what sounds like a weak quirk, but it's very strong, so Koda actually did look up to Esterosa and the Ten Commandments as heroes, and I've actually seen a comment that actually was very intrigued why I brought them in as heroes. But if I brought them in as villains, I would have to account for a lot of other things. If I brought them in as villains, I would probably have to bring in the Seven Deadly Sins or six other characters. And I would probably have to bring in a version of Escanor, so basically a character with the power of Sunshine. And I was thinking about doing that, but I really did not want to. Because that quirk in itself is overpowered. <coughs> Especially because Escanor went up against the Demon King with his power. And him and the Demon King have stood on equal footing. But, spoiler alert, skip 10 seconds ahead for right now. Esterosa uses his soul power and actually goes beyond the Demon King and actually basically turns Super Saiyan. That's how much I know. Anyways. After those 10 seconds. Now then. I don't know if that was actually 10 seconds, but if that was, I am very impressive. That's a bit stroking my own ego. I'm sorry. I really need to stop that now. Okay. This this has actually brought me somewhat back to stability doing what ifs today. It's actually I basically got bleh. 
it's basically been very therapeutic for me doing these today, and I'm actually quite happy. I hit a big milestone and have actually made a lot of people happy with doing the pitch black one and have a very big list of what it's to do, and it's... I'm actually really happy by that. Because I never thought I would get so big so so fast. <sighs> okay, stay calm. Now then. Deku versus Muscular. Deku would have ran into the forest somewhat flying with his with his wings. Esther Esterosa would have told Deku that an easier way to do it with his arms would be to somewhat form a glider. And Deku would have tried this over and over again. And he would say that he needs to just try focusing on it. Deku would have been able to make the wings. And he could actually bring his arms up to them. And actually stick his hands in them. So he is still using his hands as the main way to maneuver them. But just like my bone manipulation, what if he can just immediately pull his hands out and use them? So he doesn't really need to do all that. Now then. I'm not holding this. Anyways. Now then. Deku has been looking around and he finally found Koda. Because Koda actually spent less time at his spot. Now, as soon as he found Koda... This is when Muscular would have arrived saying that they're looking for Izuku Midoriya, Bakugo Katsuki, and... Wait, who did the villains actually... Oh, stupid, I forgot who the villains took in canon. Bakugo and... Crap. I want to say Todoroki, but that's not right. Oh, I don't remember who they took in canon. Bakugo and someone else. Ah, crap. I usually have, like, whoever Deku is shipped with. But I'm introducing a ship late into this, what if. And the way I'm doing it would actually work. Okay. Crap, I said too much. Anyways. Anyways. Uh. Now then. <sighs> Calm down. Now then, anyways. Deku would actually say that you're in luck because my name's Midoriya. He would say, alright, well, kid, save me the trouble of having to kill you and just come with me. Deku would just say, is that a challenge? He would then crack his neck in his hands and immediately turn on the assault mode. And the way this would happen, it would look like it just flood out of his body, but no. His blazer is actually smaller, and it covers his entire chest. Now, this is whenever Muscu would say that, from what he's heard, that's, that's the quirk he has, yeah. So you really are him. Muscu would then power up his own quirk and begin fighting with Deku. Now, Deku himself, he would be able to hold back Muscular's arm, but as soon as it gets bigger and bigger, Deku would just come, he would, he would do something like what All Might would do, where All Might would have sacrificed his arm and came in with his left arm, but he would have actually just moved all his body weight onto his left foot and actually come in with his left arm, attacking him directly in the face. Now, Muscular would have been surprised that this kid even thought of doing that. And Deku, he still has a smile on his face, but he's just not talking. So he's not doing that demonic, cocky thing that Meliodas does whenever I've, whenever I've seen him somewhat in this mode. Now then, Deku would be fighting with Muscular, and it would get to a point where Deku, he would have... Him and Muscular would be fighting to the point where Deku would have gotten so angry 
that he would have actually stopped himself and told himself to stay in control. Now, Muskie would say that, what's, what's wrong, kid? You keep getting so angry that you might lose yourself? Well, I'll give you a tip. He would then go toward Koda and actually just throw him off the cliff. Deku, seeing this, would immediately try going for Koda, but Muscular would have actually held him down. Now, this gets to the point where Koda, all you hear is him screaming, and then nothing. Deku then begins to just completely lose it. He thinks that Koda is dead. He thinks he just lost his first... He thinks that he just suffered his first loss as a hero. And he doesn't even have his license yet. So, this is actually really going to affect him. Now then. Now, as Deku hears... Nothing. Nothing at all. He just feels rage. Muscular is telling Deku that... Well, the way this fight was going, you don't have to worry. You'll see him again, and you're dead. Now, what Muscular didn't realize was... He fucked up. Now then, after blatantly just saying that out there... Muscular would then just watch his Deku... His entire body gets engulfed in darkness. And through the darkness, he just hears Deku screaming louder and louder and louder to the point where the entire forest can hear it. And people are confused because they know who that is. Everything goes silent and all that you would see is Deku step out in his Endura mode. Yeah, the way Deku's Endura mode works in this what if is that since he is not a demon, this is actually a precursor to his perfected demon power, or what I like to call his perfected assault mode, because this is not going to be a demon Deku, this is going to be a regular quirk. Well then, he still does have his all of his hearts before anyone asks, I know that that's not how it works. But I would like to include this because I have seen this transformation and thought it is very unique to the Demon Clan. And I just wanted to include it as part of their power. Now then, after that, Deku would... What he has for his Endura mode is his entire legs are turned in, into spikes. All, both of his legs are turned into spikes. He has four arms. He's at least grown bigger in muscle mass. And his entire skin has just altered in pigmentation. Now then, after that, Deku, he would immediately just start running at Est Esterosa. Deku would immediately just start running towards... <sighs> running towards... Muscular while still in this mode. Muscular has seen this, and he's realizing that this is something new. Because he wasn't briefed or told that this kid can transform. Now, after that, Muscular would do that whole 100% thing where Deku tried to smash his arm and hold it back to give Koda time to run. But, Deku thinks Koda has died. Now, after that, Deku, while he's holding back Muscular's arm with two hands, he's ripping out muscle tendons in the arm with his other two. Muscular just keeps screaming louder and louder because each time Deku rips out a piece, there's always a piece replacing it. So he can just keep tearing out as much as he wants. This is whenever muscular screams echo throughout the forest. Which is confusing everyone else. Now, 
<coughs> Ow. Now, after that, this is whenever Deku, he would have eventually ripped out most of the muscle tendons in his arm, and Muscular is left there, holding it by nearly skin and bone. He still has muscle tendons left, just not enough. He's calling this kid a monster and a villain just like him. Deku, he would have just finished the job by breaking both of Muscular's kneecaps and smashing, well, cracking his skull into the nearby mountain. Because, hey, that looked like a perfectly good mountain. Now, Deku would immediately fly through the forest just screaming. I thought I just spilled my tea. As much as possible. Everyone just keeps seeing the shadow fly overhead. Deku had been, oh, I, forget, I don't know if I said it because I just had to re-record this. He also has Super Saiyan 3 like hair like Arari's right here. Or I believe that's the name. Dereri. Anyway, after that, <sighs> after that, not only is he screaming, but he would fly to where the fires are, rip out one of Dobby's arms, along with taking his eye, and possibly an ear. He would have knocked out the mustard gas guy by smashing his face in, face in with his mu with his mustard gas mask. Nearly making him suffer from mustard poisoning, but also breaking a couple of the bones in his face. He would have broken Mr. Compressed like a Kit Kat bar. Dragon Ball, ref Dragon Ball Z abridged reference. But after breaking Mr. Compressed's back, probably leaving him crippled for the rest of his life, he would have kicked the lizard guy into a tree. Toka's not a villain in this one, so she is spared. Because she is going to be in the rival school for 1A. The... Muscular, Mr. Compressed, Dobby, Mustard Gas. Lizard guy got kicked into a tree. The guy who refracts things, like the gravitational pull of items, he would immediately get that thing taken away from him, and Deku would have beaten him with it. This guy is not going to be able to stand anytime soon. Deku would immediately fly over, hearing the commotion go on with Moonfish, and immediately rip out Moonfish's teeth one by one, sadistically with a smile on his face, and actually proceed to take this giant pillar and kick it straight into Moonfish's sternum, pinning him to a tree with it. Now, after that, Esterosa being one of the only heroes besides Eraserhead and the Pussycats and Class 1 Beast Teacher are at the campsite. Eraserhead keeps trying to erase Deku's quirk, but that's not working, and he can barely keep eyes on the kid. Now, along with that, Esterosa, he confronts Deku con directly, telling him that he needs to calm down. That this isn't the way a hero acts. Now, after that, Deku would keep trying to attack Esterosa, but Esterosa's quirk would just keep knocking him to the ground. Deku gets angrier and angrier, and each time he does, he would just immediately stand back up, powering through Esterosa's quirk, and each time he would take a step toward Esterosa, all you would hear is a ground shaking, along with it cracking under Deku's feet. Now, Esterosa is both horrified and impressed by this. He's basically harboring so much ill will towards him, and getting so angry that he's powering through his quirk. He's keep trying to calm Deku down, but the only thing Deku can say is Koda. As he just starts crying. He has tears in his eyes while he's screaming directly into Esteros' face. Barely able to move his arms, but 
just powering through enough to walk. This is whenever Froppy would actually come out through the forest with Coda actually on her back. Now, she actually was able to see Coda get thrown from the battlefield because she saw Deku flying around and she actually was going to go meet him up there. But before she could, this is whenever the villain actually came onto the battlefield. Now, she was actually waiting for the best time to get Coda, but muscular throwing him off the cliff kind of gave her the opportunity to get him. So, she kind of let Deku believe muscular killed Coda, but she really didn't want to, like, oh, hey, Midoriya, it's okay, I caught Coda. Because Mosuke would have just gone after her. Now, as soon as Deku would see Coda, he would have dropped to his knees and just cried. Now, he would actually semi-revert back to his form, going back into this mode, and actually taking deep breaths, realizing what he did to the villains. Esteroso would say that he may have almost murdered the villains, but it's justifiable. You lost control again, but you handled yourself better. Because the last time you killed the villain, well, you killed a monster. This time, you only hurt them. You didn't dismantle them, but hey, no fatalities. Isn't that what's important? Just like Batman. He won't kill, but brutal brain injuries, possibly. Now, this is where I'm going to be leaving off on this part. And I'm going to be uploading this and then recording <coughs> the Riddick What If. Alright, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. And before I go, I'm glad I was able to record enough videos today and actually do this. Because I noticed that while I was recording a lot today, it actually has calmed me down and has been a form of stress relief. Because it's given me a lot to... It's been fun for me. It's been an enjoyable experience for me. I can genuinely sit down and enjoy doing this. And I'm just happy that a lot of people are actually liking what I'm doing. Now, I hope you guys have enjoyed the story. And have an amazing day.